fit father who used to swim regularly, caught coronavirus in March of 2020 and continued to be hit by mysterious waves of symptoms for months. A healthy 22-year-old kindergarten worker who six months after catching the virus still couldn't return to work due to chronic tiredness, fluctuating heart rate and muscle aches. As the world's battle with coronavirus looks to be progressing from resistance to recovery, through increased testing and the development of vaccines, attention is now turning to stories like these, stories of people bearing the burden of what is being called long COVID or long haul coronavirus. Nearly 200 million people have been infected with the SARS-CoV-2 virus since the start of the pandemic in 2020. Almost 4 million people have died. Most coronavirus patients recover from the virus within a fortnight, only suffering a fever, cough, and losing their sense of smell or taste for several days. Unfortunately, for many others, their journey to recovery is less straightforward. I fell ill on the 17th of March, 2020. I'm not going to have to say the year, which is so depressing. Um, and my symptoms have been quite wide ranging, but respiratory, cardiac, neurological. I have issues with my mobility. I need a wheelchair to go more than about 100 meters. I used to cycle 13 miles a day, by the way, so I was not a wheelchair user before. So many people have been affected now. There might, it, it opens up possibilities for treatments, for answers. I was 42 years old, a proud dad. I was running a successful company as an occupational psychologist. I used to swim regularly. I just finished building rear extensions to the rear of our house. I'd say I was probably in pretty good health. And then what? Well, in early March, I developed a little tickle in my throat, which soon developed into the classic COVID-19 symptoms of a cough, fatigue, loss of smell, my heart was racing. I went into our loft to isolate for a week and came back down feeling pretty, pretty groggy and pretty rough, to be honest. And some 10 days later, all those symptoms came back again and I crashed badly. This wasn't supposed to happen. It wasn't in the descriptions we had of the illness. I had no idea really what was going on and neither did my GP. It was quite a scary time. I recorded messages for my wife and daughter and wrote them letters. I feared that the worst would happen. But I kept waking up. I was left with fatigue and a head that felt like it was pumped up like a balloon. And that episode marked the start of what I'm calling my Corona Coaster journey. Summer and autumn was a horrible time. I kept being hit by new waves of symptoms. I lost sensation one day on my right hand side and was sent to a hospital for a scan to see whether I developed a, a, a stroke. And the day my feet went purple, I was again sent to the hospital to check whether I developed a clot in my legs. Long COVID is an umbrella term encompassing symptoms that persist for more than a month and is poorly understood. There is currently no official medical definition, as scientists don't yet know enough about the condition. In the UK, long-haul coronavirus is defined as symptoms which last for more than four weeks after infection, and symptoms of the virus can persist for weeks on end in long haulers, the term for patients plagued by lasting complications. What's really concerning is the vast spectrum of symptoms that fluctuate over time, often overlap and can affect any system in the body, from fatigue, a cough and shortness of breath, to inflammation and injury of major organs, including the lungs and heart, and even neurological and psychologic effects. Other long-term symptoms that have been reported by coronavirus survivors, both suspected and confirmed, anecdotally, include hearing problems, brain fog, memory loss, lack of concentration, mental health problems, and hair loss. In fact, according to a global study conducted by University College London, which quizzed almost 4,000 long haulers, there may be more than 200 symptoms of long haul coronavirus. Medical experts are still trying to figure out what the cause is. Recently, German researchers from the Max Planck Center for Physics and Medicine in Germany found that changes to blood cells caused by coronavirus may explain why so many patients suffer from long-haul coronavirus. The researchers found that the virus alters the size and stiffness of red blood cells. They believe this can make blood clumpy and therefore harder to get oxygen around the body. Additionally, they found that the size and shape of white blood cells, a key part of the immune system, in patients with the virus were also found to be deformed in COVID patients. 
The researchers believe the combination of damage to both red and white blood cells was behind long-haul coronavirus. So we're still very much at the point where we're learning about what these long-term after effects are. It's become very apparent to clinicians seeing this group of patients that it can happen to, or the long-term effects can happen to people that were young, perfectly fit before, and perhaps even had a fairly mild acute illness, uh, enough to bring them to hospital, but maybe only stayed a day or two, and yet they are having these lasting effects of fatigue, breathlessness, not quite able to concentrate as well as before. Certainly a lot of young people that haven't been able to get back to work. Evidence for long-haul coronavirus started growing as early as May 2020, and by February 2021 the World Health Organization said it is real and significant. By June 2021, a new study from the U.S. suggested that nearly one quarter of all coronavirus patients experience long-term symptoms at least one month after being diagnosed. Researchers found that at least 23% of people in the U.S. sought medical treatment for new conditions they hadn't had before contracting the virus. In the UK, nearly 1 million people were found in May to be experiencing long-haul coronavirus. An estimated 385,000 were struggling with persistent symptoms that had gone on since last summer. The rising diagnoses of long-haul coronavirus have cast a shadow over the optimism generated by the success of coronavirus vaccines. With no effective drug treatments yet discovered, there has been little hope for those living with the worst difficulties. However, answers may soon start to come. In a world first, British scientists are set to explore giving long-haul coronavirus patients monthly doses of the coronavirus vaccine in an effort to combat the chronic condition. In 2021, 40 long-haul coronavirus sufferers will be offered at least two extra jabs. If the pilot is successful, the scientists involved have been told they can recruit thousands more patients. Meanwhile, Imperial College London researchers compared the blood of dozens of patients for a study and found long COVID sufferers had certain autoantibodies not present in patients who recovered quickly from the virus or never had it. It raises the prospect that sufferers of the poorly understood condition could soon be spotted through a simple test. Countries around the world are also setting up special clinics to help long haulers suffering as a result of coronavirus. In the UK, by the end of 2020, the NHS set up nearly 70 clinics. What we're doing here is it'll be a, general, it'll be a senior nurse-led uh, facility supported by a multidisciplinary team of allied health professionals so they'll be able to bring a holistic support uh, to the patients as they transfer from hospital through the step-down facility and then eventually home. In the U.S., Congress allocated $1.1 billion to studying the prolonged health consequences of coronavirus. Hopefully the answers will follow.